Well, it was a wild weekend, huge playoff matchups, big names not performing, some under the radar names that delivered big performances. We get into all the studs and duds, talk breaking news, upcoming week matchups, and a whole lot more on today's show. Make sure you click subscribe and enjoy today's episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. That's very high pitched today. Yeah, I mean, does that mean you're happy? Are you a happy camper? I'm a whole bunch of everything, Jason. A little happy, a little sad, a little crazy, a little caffeinated. Yeah, you didn't win them all. You didn't lose them all. Yeah, you I had, I didn't of, lose any of my bye weeks. Yeah, that's always that's always a nice part. Uh, welcome in, one and all. Monday, the fantasy footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. So much to react to over the weekend. A lot of emotions were flowing here in Baller Studio, and there's still football to be played tonight. And does Jalen Hurts play football? I oh. I think so. <laughs> he better. <laughs> um, but why why don't we just kick the show off with one of our favorite segments? It's the Bijan Minute. Yeah. Mm. I was ready for Monday pun day. Oh man. And you hit me with a Bijan minute drop. <laughs> you hit me with a Bijan <laughs> from your playoffs drop. Dude. Oh, man. Oh. Revenge of the Sith. Holy moly. Arthur Maybe Smith, Bijan you suck. <laughs> Arthur Smith, you suck. I'm so happy you lost that game. I hope you lose your job. You, you have some different opinions? Number two. Remember when you were like... Uh, yeah, Arthur Smith. Yeah, I was like, oh, Loki's not a bad guy. Yeah, we a- got like a whole super cut of you... Singing praises of Arthur Smith. You lost to Carolina. You fell right into his trap. I sure did, you think, man. You he think, waited for week one of the playoffs. You think he doesn't know it's oh, playoffs in fantasy football? 100% he does. 1,000%. He's like, hey, hey, check this out. This is four weeks ago. He got his coaching staff together. He goes, hey, check this out. Do you see that the fantasy football playoffs start the week that we have the best matchup against a ground opponent? Like, we can run all day on Carolina. What if we don't use Bijan? I mean, Bijan, seven for 11. Three targets. And a fumble. One fumble. Had to the teach Falcons, him a lesson. The Falcons' big three, Drake London. By the way, I sent you each $100. <laughs> yeah. I did receive it. Uh, I received it as thank well. Thank you. I, put, I, I fell for the Drake London into my DFS lineup. Uh, the Falcons' big three touched the ball in 25% of offensive plays. So that's Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan. 25% of the plays. Yep. Bijan had a season low 58% of offensive snaps. Nice. So that's the lowest of any healthy game this year. Perfect. Uh, Mike, did you say Revenge of the Sith? I did. <laughs> um, oh, man. He, you got screwed. Got, he knew. Uh, he thought he could win the game without the three plays. He's like, it's Carolina. This is going to be hilarious. I'm going to troll all mm-hmm. the fantasy football players. And then it got players. out of control? Yeah, and then he was like, oh, oh, no. Oh, oh we can no. lose this. We can lose this game. You and did lose. You to but at Carolina. Least. <laughs> to Bryce Young and Carolina. At least you had on the other mm-hmm. your other running back. Because mm-hmm. 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 you had Bijan, uh-huh. and this is in your dynasty playoffs. No, no, no. This is in half of my play- So I'm in four playoffs. Yeah. And in two different leagues. Well, you were. I have, you were. Well, right. I had <laughs> Bijan Robinson. And Brees Hall as my two running backs. And how did uh, what's the Brees Hall minute like? Oh, Brees Hall like quadrupled <laughs> the score of Bijan Robinson, but my opponent played Tajay Spears, who outscored those two guys combined. And Spears scored about five. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was not great. So those guys. Well, fantasy football thoughts. Real, <laughs> real big fan. Yeah, I mean it's really ironic because you know my we've uh, this the, over the course of the season all three of us have had really good dynasty teams in our main dynasty league. Andy and I we were basically p- playing for the buy all year, and my team was built on the back of three young stud running backs: Brees Hall, Bijan, and Travis Etienne. Well, 
that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, what, ETN had about seven <laughs> points? Yeah. I don't think the three of them combined for ten points. And I'm still technically in it. I need, I need 46.14 points from Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith tonight. Well, we weren't the only ones reacting to the weekend, of course. And, um, boy, there was there was a lot more bad than good coming in on Monday, Punday, as you would expect uh, on a, a weekend like this. We mm -hmm. didn't um, – some of the studs didn't perform. So let's reflect in the most sophisticated fashion possible with some of your Monday, Punday entries. Why not start with the good? <laughs> like Isaiah, certainly. <laughs> That's good. Or Yaden Waddle. Oh, he was good. Super Cup. Or uh, Christian McTouchdown. Uh-huh. I like this guy. Rushy Nice. Yeah. How about some James Cookin? And um, how about Sam LaPlayoffs? Yeah, baby. He might end up the number one tight end on the year. Yeah. Uh, Sam LaPlayoffs transport uh, you to the next round of the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> or, or you got the, the bad. You got Brees Halt or Be Gone Robinson. Let's just stay there with Be Junk okay. Robinson. <laughs> Be John Robin wins from me. <laughs> and then, uh, man, he's been so good, but then Mike. Yeah, Dak Poopscott. <laughs> <laughs> or Sacked Prescott. Oh, uh, Lost in yeah. Eckler. Devon A. Cant. <laughs> <laughs> And Flake London, of course. Yeah, and sad. Travis Smelsey. Ooh. Oh. And Sam Bowles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, man. There, there were a lot of letdowns this week. And as an update that is four years in the making. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Destiny. Destiny's child <laughs> has disbanded. <laughs> and our champ, champ, champ team. <laughs> We got uh, Travis Smelsey here reminded me. Yeah, we got McCaffrey. <laughs> we sure did get McCaffrey. <laughs> Destiny is over. Yeah, yeah. The champ, and champ, I believe champ the other. Is... Uh, d how many teams in that league? Twelve. Yep. So eleven teams throwing a parade this afternoon. That there is... was must much rejoicing in. Oh, our... in, the, in the slack. Yeah, a lot of gifts. Oh my god! It's really. I think the I rain is over. It's hurtful. The me king and, is dead. Me and Jason were we were hurting. Oh, I'm hurting sure. Men. And yeah. these guys are just like, yeah. I'm gonna throw all these gifts to make fun of you. What? I can't. It's, believe it's it. completely inappropriate. Yeah, I'm childish. Not, I'm not in that league, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> I, I, I have I, I have been listening to Champ 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 for so long. Oh, we didn't get it. Down goes Frasia. Yeah. Champ 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 Chump. Oh, the last year, yeah. Duck, duck, now you're gonna have to try to go for champ, 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 space, champ. Yeah, we're yeah I'll gonna, take a hike. Yeah, <laughs> we're probably gonna need to do a little bit of rebuilding. We've has we've, the clock run out. Yeah, we our our Derrick Henry, Mike Evans, Travis Kelsey uh, led roster is uh, it's like a fine wine that is expiring. <laughs> it's well, like oh, this one's been too old. I know it's stu it's studs and duds today, so we're gonna talk about all of them. But it, I mean. You know, if you if you played Easton Stick, you got a lot more points than you did from Sam Howell's eleven or Dax eight or Kyler sixteen somehow or Fields twelve. Mm -hmm. A lot of the it was the quarterbacks. Man. Yeah, I mean they they really stunk it up. And what's funny is, like you said, all of the no name guys that nobody would have played, um, they all they all scored over twenty fantasy points. The the Jake Brownings and the uh, you know, uh, did Easton you see Jake Smith. Browning? He had his uh, you like that moment? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. He turned to the camera, he slammed his helmet down, and he said, "You shouldn't have something cut me." Yeah, yeah. I read about it, but I didn't. I didn't. I haven't seen. It was it great. Yet. Yeah, he's three and zero. Yeah, I mean, fired up for him, and uh, he got it done again. It's 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 wild. It's been a crazy, crazy weekend with more on the table. All the studs and duds today. Let's talk some news first. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jamar Chase suffered an AC joint sprain in his right shoulder. The Bengals are bracing for Jamar Chase to miss some time. He's mm. getting an MRI today. If only you made the playoffs, Mike. T. Higgins could have just carried you from here on out. Yeah, we're not going to talk about my league of records <laughs> scoring output this weekend. But uh, the, for Jamar Chase, there was the uh, little bonus news blurb of he went to do the MRI, and it was he was in too much pain to actually get it done. Well, so that's not good. That yeah, it 
be prepared to be without Jamar Chase. I think it, in an MRI, you're just laying there. Yeah, I mean, so. guys do crazy stuff, but you we'll be talking replacements. Michael Pittman, who was on his way to another great game. Yeah, he was. Was oh. absolutely annihilated in a hit that left him in the concussion protocol and and also had the defender ejected from the game. I think he should be ejected from several games. He should I have mean, to miss as many games as Pittman misses. That hit was brutal. Yeah. And and it, what's crazy is like uh, it's concussion protocol. So this is this is brain, but like the hit was more than just head. I mean, the way that his, he kind of got neck. bent backwards. Yeah, I was, was, yeah, I was uh, worried about his neck. Yeah, he's scorpioned. Yeah. Yep. That is exactly what happened. Everybody knows what you mean when you say he's scorpioned. And Le scorpion. Levis reverse scorpioned, right? No, he also scorpioned. That's a scorpion, yeah. full yeah. scorpion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want a scorpion. No, you don't. That's one of my uh, – what did Keaton Mitchell do then? Oh, that was That's the hyperextension of his knee. That, that, was, thing that was not worth watching. watching. Yeah. yeah. Zach Moss got off to a hot start and then injured his right wrist, never came back in the game. That one – like the the Pittman and Moss ones feel just extra awful. I mean, injuries always feel bad, but 31% of the snaps for Pittman. He was already four for 78. He was Zach, crushing. Zach Moss scored on the play that he re-injured re uh, his, his arm, and then the running backs for the Colts went on to have good outputs, and so it was just insult to injury. Trevor yeah. Lawrence left with a concussion. Yeah, he is, is in question for next week. Yeah, yeah, that was that was after the game. Uh, it was announced he's in protocol, and so TBD. Not the concussion after the game, though, right? <laughs> concussion he, was during the game. The he yeah. got the concussion okay. during the game, but didn't know if it was one of those hit your head in the locker room things. Mm. See the players do. The, Hollywood Brown. Why is this beam so low? <laughs> Hollywood Brown exited again with a heel injury. Hollywood Brown has been utterly deleted from the software. Like, there is yeah. no remaining code for Hollywood Brown. He doesn't know. Kyler doesn't know. Oh, I mean, he, he he left the last game he was in. He only played half of those snaps with this heel injury. Then had the bye week. Then missed practice after the bye week came and started, and hopefully he didn't start him. You can't trust him the rest of the season. Jaden Reed left early with a toe injury after another good game. Will Levis. High ankle I mean, sprain is what's being reported. It looked bad, but then he yeah. was on the sidelines standing up. Zach Wilson did not return for the second half. It was listed as dehydration by the CBS broadcast, and then the team labeled it head. Ruled out with concussion. It was. I mean, Zach Wilson was a, in a full snapback pedal. Yeah. Every single play. Jason, you said not enough credit goes to how bad the offensive line is with relation to how bad the Jets are, yeah. with relation to how bad their quarterbacks yeah, are. Yeah, you, you think you know the quarterback will fix it. Aaron Rodgers is is the problem. The fact that he got injured, um, Brees Hall is bad, and, and it's all because of the poor quarterback play, how bad Zach Wilson is, how bad the, the, the quarterbacks behind Zach Wilson were. But I know people have talked about, I mean, this isn't breaking news that the Jets' offensive line is bad, but it doesn't get – like Zach Wilson's name has just – trumped the probably the the biggest problem like I think their offensive line is a bigger problem than how bad their quarterback play is and their quarterback play is awful but I mean if you watch that you, game you can't bring Rodgers back no he'll he, you, you paid him all that money he will be injured he will re-injured immediately yeah, just gi give the man scissors to cut his Achilles again right now <laughs> if you want like he's dude you can't put him behind that offensive line over the Jets' last 17 games, they have 13 total offensive touchdowns. The Brees Hall, 6 for 12. So, wait, Brees Hall was 6 for 12 and Bijan was 7 for 11? Yeah. So, that's um, cool. 13 for 23 between two superstars. Yep. And uh, they will enter the – what if you made it through with one of them. Yeah, you, I hope they you will had enter the buy. The, they will enter the terror start category next week. Yeah, with Garrett Wilson. Well, yeah. Brees Hall at least gets the Washington Manders, so should be okay. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Eagles quarterback, Jalen Hurts, we got news yesterday. He was downgraded to questionable, dealing with a severe illness that worsened overnight, traveling separate from the team as to not get anybody sick. Uh, you have double quarterback questions tonight. Geno Smith is considered now a long shot to play. So the, the NFL flexed. The Eagles-Seahawks into Monday Night Football 
And then now we might we might get Marcus Mariota versus Drew Locke. My thoughts right now, hopefully you picked up Mariota, because you couldn't it's not like you could pick up Geno and be sure, or pick up Drew Locke and be sure. So Mariota, at least you'd be sure to have coverage for Jalen Hurts. Yeah. But you know, I imagine Hurts plays tonight, but I it's still very nerve wracking. If you didn't make plans, I guess you pivot to the lock Geno situation if you can. Did you say the part that Geno is a long shot? Yeah. Okay, because I was laughing to myself. Imagine you're the the staff of that plane that had to fly Jalen Hurts over. You're like <laughs> Jalen, why are you by yourself? Oh, I don't want to get the rest of my team sick. Thanks for flying me. <laughs> like what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, you, Drew, you're Locke, that sick. Get I'd off my plane. I would play Drew Lock over Mariota. I would play Drew Lock too. You're saying if if, Hertz if you doesn't could choose go, that if Hurts yes. doesn't go, yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. And so that's tonight's game. And now, would you if you need a big performance, but you've got a stack with Devontae Smith? Would that change you to go to Mariota? Just hypothetically, not nope. me. I'd rather. No. I'd rather. I'd, I'd rather take the, the shot secondary. against the secondary that's now without Darius Slay. Yeah, Philadelphia is already the worst in history, uh, numbers Ooh. wise. Impressive. With some of the touchdown and reception totals. A and then you've got DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba. I guess I'd roll. Just be healthy, Hurts, please. Yeah, Jason. He's well, he's not going to be healthy, but I think he plays. If you want to follow along at home, Jason's final chance at joy in this world mm -hmm. is Jalen Hurts plus Devontae Smith equals more than 46 fantasy points. Yeah, they've done it four times, so about 30% of the time this year – that would have uh, would have worked out, but zero uh, percent of those times did he have the flu. <laughs> yeah, or whatever he's dealing with. Uh, is that confirmed? Was it the flu? No, or? I have oh, no okay. idea. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa dot com slash insurance. Studs of the week presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Well, if you had. Yeah. If you had Sunday ticket, you can watch Jared Goff. Yeah. Five? We got it right, boys. Five touchdown passes. Whoo. And you needed every one. I, yeah. I am holding on. I need, uh, it's me versus Brooksy. Yeah. And if DK Metcalf scores 23 or so, Brooks will win. And I needed I feel uh, like this Jared Goff for that buffer. Yeah, and, and I it'll be a horror show for you if like DK gets a first half touchdown. Oh yeah, because if that happens tonight, you will be on like second half tilt watch. So this is that's it. It's just Brooks needs DK mm -hmm. and yeah. That's oh it. wow, how yeah. fun! And, and DK needs twenty two point four, I believe, something like yeah. that. How, how many was, times has he done it this year? I think in our scoring format, one once or twice recently. <laughs> yeah, but it was the three touchdown game. But that was not yeah. Drew Lock. I know. So Mike, Mike's already got, <laughs> but this is uh, against Philly. Jared today. Goff, uh, five touchdowns, the quarterback nine on the year, and just the the nastiest, stinkiest drive home a touchdown at the very end of a game for it's not for no reason, but they went for it on fourth and short just to ice the game, and then Goff is like, oh, I'm just gonna throw another touchdown. So that was delightful. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Uh, so we have Baker Mayfield. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Perfect passer rating, first time in history in Lambo. That he was excellent. He looked great. I mean, he was twenty-two for twenty-eight, three hundred and eighty-one yards, four touchdowns. I know the biggest loser out there in the Megala Bowl, which I am out of now. Uh, he had Jalen Hurts, and he was worried about the sickness. He had the gumption to put in <laughs> Baker, and he got all these points. Good, good move. Yeah, I mean, the names that I'm reading out are not often started. I mean, Baker and Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew and Derek Carr. These are DFS guys. <laughs> so, you know. It was a bad week for quarterbacks in general. Brock Purdy, though. Four more touchdowns against yeah. the Cardinals. It, it, next week, Baltimore, that's the matchup. Running back, CMC, three touchdowns. Oh, man. <laughs> the Cardinals left McCaffrey and Debo so open on a couple of plays. I mean, they – it's wild. They have to go play Baltimore next week, right? So that'll be a much more difficult matchup. Thankfully, it's at home. Baltimore, they're a really good defense, but Christian. It's K San Francisco, though. Yeah, they're 
unstoppable. And uh, he is the betting favorite for Offensive Player of the Year. Brock Purdy? No, nope, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, McCaffrey is? For Offensive, offensive player. player of the Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that, that makes sense. He's having one of those seasons yep. that, you know, you look back on and you remember LaDainian Tomlinson. You remember, like, these crazy seasons. He's on pace for 378 opportunities, 2,200 total yards, 24 touchdowns total. Only three running backs have ever hit that mark. LT, Priest, Holmes, Marshall, Falk. This is one of those, like, you got him, you're going to win a championship. It, it's going to be hard to miss out. Like, it took Christian McCaffrey to beat champ, champ, champ. Mm -hmm. We got McCaffrey'd. I, I, look, you got McCaffrey'd in, in DFS. You fool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. And uh, I am nervous about the Baltimore game because people need him in the semis. He plays Washington for the championship. Oh. So it's like I have a team, my the, the dynasty number one seed that I've got McCaffrey. And last year I lost in the semis when I was a favorite, and this year I'm afraid of McCaffrey against Baltimore. But you just got to hope they can overcome. Hopefully that's a good game. It's a Christmas game. Whoa. Monday night, Christmas, Baltimore. Really? 49ers. Christmas miracles. Are those the best two teams in football record-wise? Believe so. Yeah, that's crazy. James Cook was crazy. Oh my goodness! Yeah, like a like a hot knife through butter on every play. Twenty five for one seventy nine, two touchdowns, and they, they could not stop him. They they couldn't stop. You know who was stopping him? The Buffalo Bills. Like there were several plays where they're by the end zone, and it's like, no, we can't we can't put James Cook in. Well, I mean, there. Latavius scored right. So Latavius Murray got a touchdown on the ground. In this, it was Josh Allen had a touchdown on the ground, and the last five weeks for James Cook, the number two, number two, number seventeen, number nine, number twenty-four. So somehow he's the RB five on the year. Although the last five weeks were really the only ones that you could start him with confidence, but they have changed the equation in Buffalo. They are running the football. They are giving James Cook opportunities. It has come at the expense of Dalton Kincaid and Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. I mean Kincaid and Gabe Davis both. Mm -hmm. goosed this week. So hopefully you ran away from Kincaid the way I did in our league of record because I was terrified. Well, you had you had David Njoku. Yeah. So that made it a lot easier. <laughs> it did make it easier, although I did talk to some people this week that had the other opinion that wanted to play Dalton Kincaid, and I was like, you crazy. I don't want to do that. Can you imagine? I would have I would have lost. Uh, Jameer Gibbs. Continues Beast. dominating at football. 11 for 100, two more touchdowns. He is now the RB7 in fantasy points per game. Nice. Ty Chandler. Yeah, baby. He looked awesome. 23 for 132 and a touchdown. He looked better than Madison, Madison ever yeah. looked this season. Well, yeah. Madison had 13 games and zero rushing touchdowns. Ty Chandler got one start and has a rushing touchdown. And 132 yards and explosive top end speed that's, that you're looking for. And huge shout out to Mike because he was bullish on Chandler and I was bullish on Chandler until the like just thinking more about the quarterback situation and remembering of what Mullins, yeah. What like uh who was the demon quarterback that ruined Jay, uh Dalvin Cook? Oh, man, we would have to look that one up. I mean, it was a Kyle, are you listening? It was an atrocious player. This was a the Green Bay game. Was this 22? This cost me a championship. Sean Mannion. Nope, it wasn't nope. Mannion. Okay. Mannion would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was week was that week 17? Yeah, it was week 17 championship, and all he had to do was help Dalvin Cook get about oh, six is, points. Or was it 16? Was it week 16 in a 17-week season? It's one of those. We'll find the name. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to scout it down here. Yeah, I'll know it because, I mean. No, I think it was Sean Mannion. It was, it was not Sean yeah, Mannion. Yeah, it was Sean Mannion because Dalvin Cook was nine for 13. Was it? Yep. Mm. And three receptions for zero yards. Mm. It was a combo. Sean Mannion was 22 of 36, and Kellen Mond had three That's passes. who it was. Well, it was Kellen Mond. Well, Mond had. No, no, no. It's not that game then. It was the game Kellen Mond started. I can promise you. It was Green Bay. Yeah, this is the Green Bay game. Mm. Did Kellen Mond start that game? And That I don't know. I'm just looking at box scores. Anyways. Anyways. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, back to Ty Chandler being awesome. Um. And and robbed of a touchdown. I don't remember how long the the run was, but it was a it was it had to have been like a forty yard rush, 
gets tackled barely on the one, and then they call the stupidest pass play that you can call for the end zone, and Nick Mullins is running around, running around, throws up a prayer ball that Jordan Addison happens to catch. It was like, come on. Come on, man. Get, get the ball to Chandler. He deserved that touchdown. Kyron Williams, 27 for 152 and a touchdown. The chalk. He looked it hit, baby. He looked a lot like James Cook looked, where he was just unstoppable every single play back and forth. But uh, as good as he is, and he's he's been great. I mean, the, the Washington Manders, it's just yes. sometimes yep. matchups aren't yep. fair. Rashad White, now they are before on the year, continues to dominate. Yeah, he had a 50 yards receiving with a receiving touchdown to go along with 20-plus carries again, almost 100 yards on the ground. He's been really, really great, and he's so consistent. His floor is so high. They have really changed to where he is like the, the, the center of their offense, and he's a true workhorse. He gets volume in a way that they're like five other guys get in the league. Speaking of volume, Devin Singletary. Yeah, what? <laughs> Damian Pierce, I believe, had one opportunity in this game. I saw a Goomba Wale out there. Yeah, he played one snap. He had one opportunity, and then Devin Singletary, this is something to watch. I mean, 31 opportunities, once again ran the ball well, 26 for 121, 4 for 49 through the passing game. He's the De reason they won this game. He's the reason they won the game. And if you look at his, his history, over the last six games, his pace would be 300 attempts, 1,500 rushing yards, eight touchdowns, 39 receptions. Wow. And that is with a couple of games where he didn't get a lot of snaps because of Damian yeah. Pierce. So. You know, it's a very tough matchup against Cleveland next week, but it's at home, and Devin Singletary, I think, is going to get all the snaps. Yeah, and, and he's, he he's been really, really good. He He's won the job for a team that is competing for the playoffs. They are at the point now where it's like, that. I think they'll have C.J. Stroud back this week, which is even better, um, but they're at the point where it's like, they need to put their best player on the field and make sure that they're securing these games to... to play you know after uh, week 18 and I think it takes a lot of like it's good coaching because he's been 4.8 a carry during that entire stretch and you've got a player like Damian Pierce is about three a carry maybe lower and you're not just you're not you know, Algiering yeah you're not just like blindly loyal yeah <laughs> just try to win the game Algiering I, I hate Arthur Smith <laughs> man you went through a real he got me he got me. Yeah. It's like you guys had gone through counseling. Yeah. Things were looking better. Didn't work out. Yeah, but he Arthur relapsed. Yeah, that was the issue. <laughs> Clyde edwards alaire Jarek McKinnon. Clyde did not look good on the ground again, but he did have a big catch, four for 64 and a touchdown through the air. Jarek McKinnon scored and then, I guess, missed some time. Yeah, well, he, it was a strange situation because it was the he went out before halftime, you know, the clock is ticking down, but he already headed back. He did come back, and he had a carry in the fourth. But So it's just it's at least something to pay attention to. Uh, Raheem Mostert is not stoppable. 18 touchdowns on the ground this year, two through the air, so 20 total. Next week is Dallas, then Baltimore. James Conner, big run against San Francisco, ended up 14 for 86, got back into the end zone. Two good weeks for Conner. Not sure how you feel about him on the road against Chicago next week. I, I I feel probably about the same, if not better, than I would feel about him against San Francisco and their great defense. If if he's going to be on the field and getting the carries and the opportunities, he he's looking he looks really really good. So I know Chicago's run defense has been great, but it would be very hard to bench James Conner after back to back beastly performance I'm, I'm terrified yeah I mean he, you, he played under options, under 50 percent right? of snaps so at least with him and Singletary I'm definitely going to lean the Singletary yeah. way yeah I don't understand what the Cardinals are doing on offense uh it's called Michael Carter he is there to disrupt what yeah. your plans and, were and DeMarcado like, why are we not using James Conner as a pass catcher yeah both those guys are getting a it's lot of snaps it's absurd Zamir White 17 for 69 and a touchdown on Thursday nice spot start yeah, that worked out. Uh, quick break, back with some wideouts.
Well, let's start with the players you started and hope for good things. Jalen Waddell, 8 for 142 and a touchdown with the surprise absence of Tyree Kill. Against the Jets. Yeah, he murdered him. Cooper Cup, 8 for 111 and a touchdown. Amon Ra, 7 for 112 and a touchdown. Those three players are were your studs that you played and you hoped for a big game from. And Debo. And Debo. Although, uh, he started hot, didn't really do much. Oh, he did score twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah two yeah. touchdowns. <laughs> like he, he got four. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's not fair. Like, he doesn't get enough volume to be as good as he is. He got well, four receptions and he two touchdowns. Well, Debo's been on such a, a run right now. He's been a top 10 wide receiver four consecutive games. And Would you say he's on a heater? I, I think you could say that, Mike, yes. Okay. He's also had a rushing touchdown in three of four. He's had five receiving touchdowns in those in that stretch. I mean, the, <laughs> he's on the, the, that, that four games. He's on pace for like thirty three touchdowns. So that's where he's at. He's on a heater, Mike. Um, Rashi Rice nine for ninety one and a touchdown. Devontae Adams had the big game. The players that you didn't start that had big or, games, or maybe you got backed into, like Jordan Addison. Goodness gracious. He two, was great. Two touchdowns. 111 yards, and this is the first time we've seen him with Mullins. I don't know if – Oh, Mullins looked awful. Yeah. Jason and I argued about Curtis Samuel versus Terry McLaurin. They were both great starts. I don't even know who had more fantasy points, but McLaurin was 6 for 141 and a touchdown. Every single time that they put they put um, Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett into the game, all Brissett did was yes. stare down McLaurin – and throw him the ball deep, except for the touchdown pass he threw to Curtis Samuel. And there was, and McLaurin had a like a one hander that he barely missed too. That was, would have been another like thirty yards to his total. Curtis Samuel had five for forty one and two touchdowns, so three touchdowns between them. It it was wild. The game kind of just prolonged. It just kept going. Like it seemed like the Rams had it under control. Uh, they did come out and say Sam Hell's the starter. They did. Yes. Boom. You're you're sad because of Terry McLaurin, is that why? Yeah, I'm I'm sad for everybody else on the Washington Commander team. Jacoby gets it done. I feel slightly validated because I poo pooed on Sam Howell this week, and he poo pooed oh, all he, over he his did. pants. <laughs> but it should be Brissett. But who? Ca I mean, they, it, they play the Jets next week. It should be. Are no you going to play Terry McLaurin or Curtis Samuel with confidence against the Jets? Of course not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I play. I played someone this week that had tons of injuries. It wasn't a fair fight. They got backed into two starts that they never wanted to make. Jacoby Myers and Curtis Samuel, and those guys had four <laughs> touchdowns. Yeah. Cooper Cup, like I said, had a big game. Puka did not. Godwin, 10 for 155 out of nowhere. Yeah, hurt all week. You weren't supposed to be there. And he was. He hasn't Take done, this. He hasn't done this all week. I mean, all, all year. year. Yeah. Jason? Yeah. Noah Brown, 8 for 81 and a touchdown with Case Keenum. After two gooses. It was a nice matchup against Tennessee, and you hoped that the goose got loose. <laughs> well, you hoped that the, the first goose was because he's coming no, 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 back that's from, a good, Mike. from injury, and the second goose was because he was playing against the Jets secondary that doesn't give up much in the rain where C.J. Stroud got injured. So what are you doing next week? Because you imagine... It's Cleveland. That's it's, tough. It's Cleveland. It's let's Stroud, say got, probably. Let's say you've got Stroud, if I got you no, don't have Nico. Yes, if I have no Nico, no Tank Dell, I'm playing Noah Brown. I'm fine with that. They're at home. It's not like Cleveland's going to give up nothing. Which Nico was pushing to play. I don't know if he, the the reports of the don't morning. push off his calf. Uh, just saying, like he was out there warming up. He could be ready to go. Sam Laporta, six targets, three touchdowns. He's on the cusp. Is this? He's on the cusp of being the number one tight end what? as a rookie. He he's the number one tight end. Right now, on the course of the season. Did you look it up in pl our player stats? Yeah. I'm, I'm I thought he was uh, – I right, didn't think he was there yet. Right now, in half PPR, he is the tight end one on the season. So, Travis Kelsey is about – what? It, it, Travis Kelsey is at 162.9. And Laporte yeah. is at 169.7. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, Kelsey has one fewer game played. That's, what, I guess, what I was looking at. He's, uh, he's, he's yeah, slightly he higher in one. points per game sure. than Laporta. But, I mean, it's like neck and neck, like – who would you rather start next week, Sam Laporta or Travis Kelsey? Mm, man, Kelsey Kelsey got banged up at the very, very end of that game. It's worth 
paying attention to this week. Um, I think he was like grabbing his knee, but it was right at the end, so it wasn't like he exited the game. Uh, so we'll we'll have to monitor that. But it was one of those things where it's like, you know, we benched Trey McBride in our champ, champ, champ because we got Kelsey. Right. You know, you you don't bench Kelsey. Here ever. are the he's Travis Kelsey, but then it's like, uh, I don't know, man. Should you be if you've got these other great options in points per game? Let me just give you this. So okay. for perspective, because I think this is a huge discussion. Last eight games. Here's your tight end list. Okay. Last eight games. Points per game. Points per game. Number one, Sam Laporta. Okay. Number two. Oh, it's Team David McBee. Njoku. Oh, no. Team McBee, oh, baby. Yeah, nice. okay. okay. Trey uh, McBride. Yeah. yeah, I would say Njoku could have Number there. three is tied, Hawkinson and Kittle. Wow. Hawkinson. Number four then, or number five, I mean, is Njoku. Then it goes Ingram. Then it goes Ferguson. Then it goes Komet. Wow. Here we are. Wow. Travis Kelsey, number yeah. nine. It's because of it's touchdowns. Just ahead of Dalton Schultz. Let's see. Travis Kelsey. That's one touchdown in that last eight weeks. I mean, Kelsey has five touchdowns on the year. Yep. With three weeks left. That's that's unexpected. He's got one more than Jimmy Graham. Oh, my goodness. He's got one more than no. Jimmy Graham. Yeah, Jimmy Graham, I think no. they were saying he has eight receptions I on the year and four of them are touchdowns. Foot Clan, let me know if, if you can find whether Jason and I agreed to that bet again before the season. I need to know how much money Jason owes me. I can't remember. can't remember if we does, re-upped the does bet. Does Disley have any touchdowns? No. Is he playing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, sort of. All right. Um, moving into the tight end position, Laporta, like we said, three touchdowns. David Njoku, 14 more targets. Man. I had a, a game where I was facing Flacco, and I played Cooper, and I played Njoku. And it's like <laughs> that worked out. You know, that's a hard situation because you're like not rooting for the opponent's quarterback to do well, but you are rooting for him to do well only to your guys. And I think I, I think those two guys in our league in a half point outscored Joe Flacco by like fifteen. Oh yeah. They So they, it was perfect. They crushed. I mean, that is those are the two players that he's looking for. And that's it. I mean, I wonder what the percentage of his targets were that went to those two guys. That late Cooper touchdown was and we delicious we talked about it like i made a big trade deadline trade mm -hmm. and i snuck david Najoku into the trade and i was saying i think this might be the key of the entire trade at the time because his tight end schedule something jason you you look into and you look at as a a huge indicator if a team can defend the tight end position Najoku's is the best and it was the best from the trade deadline he's the tight end two in two straight weeks He's averaging nine targets a game, and Joe Flacco is willing to throw the football and bring him. He brought him back to victory again, mm -hmm. and he threw th three picks. He's a wild Ugly man. Ugly picks. Ugly. I mean, hoo ha! Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I I was watching uh, uh, Stefanski, right, their head coach, mm -hmm. and I'm watching him in the, in the press conference after the game, and I'm going to Jason. I go, he looks a lot like Joe Flacco. <laughs> And then you look up his age. And they're two years apart. <laughs> they're like, they might as well be brothers. They look like they're brothers. They're gray they're, beard combo. Kyle, do you know that they're someone did like a face meld of the two and it just looks like Stefanski. Oh, and it just looks really? like Yeah. I think there was something out there. Looks like both of them. Uh Hunter Henry, our uh, Scotty Fish champion of the yeah, century. He did leave with a knee injury. Scored but. again. Nine targets for Henry. McBride. Yes. Ten Mc for one oh two. The, 10 for 102 against San Francisco, who's good at stopping and, the tight end. And he missed some time. Like the guy was he was clearly hurting. He is He's hulking out right now. He is the he's the only guy. He's the only player on the Arizona offense who can do anything. Also, Jason said, it does Kyler suck? And I said, I don't know, man. I'm like, the line sucks. The the backfield sucks, other than Connor, who plays half the snaps. There are no wideouts. Yeah, no one can. And get here's open. Trey McBride just ripping the ball out of the air he had a catch in that game that was a complete overthrow I mean he was just it was air mailed and he went up and grabbed this thing from the heavens came down with that ball got like broke the tackle and just you know did the Hulk scream on the sideline he is really awesome like buy in I mean you know it's I, it's I think people are buying exciting. in now but it's it's real and it's going to last. He is uh, he is uh, one of those freak 
type of human beings. Tucker Craft scored as well, four for fifty-seven yep. for the Packers, and um, that's it for the the studs. Thanks to NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV for sponsoring this segment. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just seventy nine dollars for the rest of the twenty three season when bundled with YouTube TV. Sign up now at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. That's the lowest price on YouTube TV with the base plan. Rest of the twenty twenty three season terms and embargoes apply, no cancellations. Pooped in his big boy pants. Now I don't want to just sit here in the poop and wallow <laughs> in the feces. Okay. It's one of and my that was our dud section. So let's turn this prescriptive. Okay. If they dudded, if they laid an egg in thy pants, mm -hmm. we discuss whether they'll have a clean pair of drawers for next week. All okay. right. All right. Dak Prescott. Things went sideways quickly. The Bills ran the ball. They basically evaporated quarters. Yeah. I mean, Josh Allen. Six attempts. Did not do very much. Or, sorry, six completions into the fourth quarter for, for Josh Allen. Yeah, he didn't need to. And and the question is, like, next week at Miami, great matchup, right? High-scoring affair, but you kind of thought that about the Buffalo Bills. If you're the Miami Dolphins and you just watched the drubbing beatdown that the Bills gave, it was so clear and obvious what the game plan was. You don't have to be a football mind to look at what they did and go, oh, oh, okay. So you just run it every play and should, you can beat the – We should do that. You can beat the tar out of them. And if, if there's a team set up to be able to just run successfully, I mean, so long as A-Chan's toe issue is fine between Mostert and A-Chan, could they just employ this same strategy and just keep Dallas off the field? They can try, but, I mean, Dallas, Dallas is committed to one thing in this league. And that is lopsided performances on either side of them. I mean, they either dominate or <laughs> give up the early lead. Call it off. Let I mean, them win. I mean, think about the Arizona game, right? Like all of a sudden they, they were dominating the first two weeks. Now this is two straight duds for Dak. Do you have Mike, do you have concern with the Miami matchup? No. I will be if I have Dak, I'll go right back to him. Sam Howe was replaced. He went eleven for twenty six. That is um that might be a record. Yeah, and if you want to talk prescriptive, you've got the Jets and the Niners as his next two matchups. Yep. Bye-bye. So you're done with the Howell experiment. That was a fun run. Justin Fields was not excited about this matchup against Cleveland. 19 for 40, uh, two Hail Mary interceptions, didn't yep. run the ball well, fumbled twice, Oh, man. Threw for a hun under 175 yards. But Mooney almost caught it. He was he was obviously not good, but it it's such a shame that he goes down with two interceptions. Like he didn't throw an interception in this game. He threw a hail mary at the end of the half. Okay, it got picked. He threw a hail mary at the end of the game, which should have been caught for a touchdown. That's a quarterback penalty for not being in a competitive game. <laughs> sure, yeah, but <laughs> that's well, what it's called. But even like the first <laughs> half, that's not that you're not in a competitive yeah. game. And actually, I would argue that. If you're throwing a Hail Mary, then you're in a competitive game. It, it, it's a chance to win. Like, he would have won the game. Would he have gotten credit for the touchdown if Mooney caught it? Yeah. Okay. Then we count the interception. I know. I'm just saying it's like, it's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, no, I, it, I know. I feel it, like it feels those unfair, should... like tip passes sometimes, yeah. too. Kyler Murray. <laughs> oh, but prescriptively of Fields. I, I'm playing Fields this next week well, against he plays Arizona. Arizona so yeah. yeah. Yeah, we move forward. Yep. Thank you. Kyler, though. Kyler was a... He he was at three fantasy points until his little uh, throwaway drive at the end of the game. He can't do it with this group, and I, I don't know, man. The Cardinals, uh, the, the Carolina won. Now I want the Cardinals to have the number one pick again, <laughs> and I I don't know what I, I am. I, what is it? Prisoner of the moment? I really am with with Kyler. Yeah, I someday I am, sometimes I watch him and I'm like I I'm done. I don't want to watch him anymore. I'm more concerned about Kyler than I am about Fields for fantasy purposes. Uh, yeah. Ironically, this next week, right, they play each other. I will play Fields over Kyler in that That's same well, matchup. Uh, yep. Fields is at home. The Cardinals' defense is worse. Chicago's defense That's an is easy getting one much to better. Me. That's yeah. an easy one. But now, uh, and Ky you've got DJ Moore. Kyler versus the Jake Browning, that's a different discussion. Those are when you start to just – like Kyler Murray's not been – He's been bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's the word he for it, bad. isn't it? I mean, 
11 fantasy points, 13, 20, 21, 17. I, mean, I don't this think is, he has a receiver that can catch a touchdown, man. How many multi-touchdown games does he have so far? Kyler? Yeah. yeah. Now, does rushing count? No. Then none? None. None through the air. Yeah. I mean, what is that? Four games, five games? Five, five. games, four passing touchdowns, three rushing. It's a it's a scary start, let's say that. Running backs, boy, there were some big names and big oh. dumps. Oh, we had fun with Derrick Henry. Andy's laying on the couch. We knew Derrick Henry had a dud. And I ask him, I go, hey, Derrick Henry had 16 carries in this game. How many yards did he have? And Andy starts at like 35. I knew where you were going, so I'm like, oh, I'll start at like 30. <laughs> like lower lower and he lower just kept lower and going. he couldn't get all the way down to he had nine yards on 16 carries he had four receptions not targets four catches he got a yard <laughs> shout out to ryan mcdowell he shared this derrick henry is the first player in nfl history to have at least 20 touches in a game and produce less than 15 total yards from scrimmage <laughs> It's it's impossible. Amazing work. Well, and it was it's against historically the bad. Who you know it, it, that that used to be the uh, that's Derrick Henry's matchup. Now there was no snow on the ground in yeah, Vermont. I was gonna say it, it dry, hot. I, I think it was rainy, but just no. But snow. listen, Bijan, Henry, Barkley, A. Chan, Brees, Hall, Pollard, Etn. Wow. So I am reading you a list of players that got you to the playoffs. How many of those are you actually concerned about for next week? Matchups. Bijan plays Indianapolis. Derrick Henry, Seattle. Barkley, Philly. Achan, Denver. Or, I'm sorry, Dallas. Brees That's, Hall, Washington. Pollard, there, Miami. There's not one of these players that you're not going to start. The one that I would be concerned about, I, I do think ETN has had a stretch of bad games where if he's not getting touchdowns, he's not been efficient this year. He's just Might not. have Beathard. Yeah, I mean, we... I, yeah, we don't know if uh, Lawrence will go through the concussion protocol uh, quickly or not. But either way, like he hasn't, Etienne hasn't actually been good this year. He has been good for fantasy because he's scored so many touchdowns. But he's been pre and and he does get volume and pass catching. But he's been very very ineffective. <laughs> At least four, on the ground. At least four catches every game. He's been very ineffective on the ground, and he's playing against <laughs> the Buccaneers. So, and I know end of season ranks are they can be misleading, which is why we. Uh, we produce our truth series, the truth about how players got where they are as soon as the the regular season is over. Do you know where Travis Etienne currently resides? I he's, do. He's number three. Yeah. Right. So, no, and I, I disagree with the contention that he's not been good. Okay. I agree with the contention he's not been efficient. I, I, I think Travis Etienne's an excellent player. You know, you, you can't put up that level of touchdowns and effectiveness in the red zone and catch that many passes. Like, I, I think that he's done a lot this year to impress it's just when he's not scoring lately it's been a problem i mean if you had him he carried you yeah he, i mean he was like the, the rb1 season. through the first eight weeks yes in the beginning of the season well he had that stretch and the matchups run. have been tough i mean you got uh cleveland baltimore the last two weeks he he had that stretch run where every single week he had two touchdowns and it was it was glorious but like it's a, like i have etm right my, my dynasty team that was set to be a, a bye week team and now is about to exit um a, a large part of that is etn do you think that since the bye week since he's week played 10, poorly though i do i, I like think when you watch him when i watch him I, I i don't i don't think he's played like i don't think travis etn sucks i don't think he's a bad player none of that but he doesn't get he, he leaves stuff on the field he has not looked special to me he hasn't looked he's looked like a volume play um, and they use him around the goal line, and he gets receptions, and that's fine. So then fine. Do, you, do you think he's a dynasty trade? Um, yeah, I mean, this offseason. If he off finishes season, at three, sure. you could trade him for whatever you want. Yeah, I, I, I would be happy to do that. Um, since week 10, so since their bye week, which is a good start, that's six weeks, he's been the running back 18. And so it's like, that's not murdering you, but that's not, you know, you talk about he's the running back three on the course of the season. He's, you know, behind – Brees Hall behind Bijan during those stretches. Yeah, 42 behind, rushing behind yards a game. Chuba during that. 42 rushing yards a game in that stretch. Yeah. Some really brutal. And then the. I the, mean, they've lost four of six. You know, they were winning all those games where he was scoring. So, like, 
the winning side running back generally does a lot better, and they lost to San Francisco and Cleveland and Baltimore. Tampa's good on the ground. So, yeah, that's fair. I think I'm worried about Barkley, obviously, when you take on Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, but you're not going to sit him down, no. right? I mean, no. now players you can sit down. You can think about Javante. You can think about Najee. You can think about um, – I mean, those two guys had big dud weeks that you couldn't count on. What do you think about Zeke? Zeke was very disappointing, but he's still, you know, 87% of snaps. 17 opportunities. 17 opportunities, six targets. Just play him. Right, that's kind of how I feel, too. Single terrier Zeke, though, then you're a different discussion. Sure, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's it's who else do you have to start. But We do have confirmation here, a little bit of breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news. Uh, Kyle, you are you're on the microphone today. I'm here, Jason. You owe Andy four hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yep. Okay. I knew it. Wait. How, what, what, how was this established? Uh, on the show, live with I said evidence. This? Yeah, you did. I knew you did. Yeah. See, Mike. Mike's Wait, been covering you for you, my man. Mike's yeah. been covering. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, to be fair, I was also then the one in Slack who's like. Uh, Andy, I think Jason owes you money. Oh, I take that high five back. It's too late. It's on my hand. It's fresh. <laughs> it um, still stings. It's all right. I already sent him a hundred for losing at DFS. <laughs> yeah, I, so this is only I think three. I sent him like a hundred a couple weeks ago for <laughs> we, a bat. We just have an escrow that we just pass. Like that sometimes just, you have ownership of it, sometimes you don't. It's just like five hundred dollars that yeah. swaps between yeah. people. Yeah, never actually gets spent. That's big news. Thank you, Kyle. Your commission is on the way. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Jimmy Graham still got opportunities, right, for the rest oh, of the year. Oh man, Jimmy Graham's terrifying. You got to get out. Am of I this? allowed to end this bet? I was gonna say you got to get out of this. I'm gonna end this bet tomorrow. Pick which kid okay. you don't want because to go to college. Maybe Disley gets a touchdown tonight. I can get a hundred back. Ooh, yeah. nice. Thanks for the money. Well, you have you have received your money now. Thank you. Thank you. Just did it live. All right. Yeah. Um. All right. It's it's panic in the streets at wide receiver for Stephon Diggs at this point. I mean. The, the recipe for this team has been to run the football. It has uh, caused major issues. Diggs, four for 48. The game started, and I was a little I optimistic. Mean, but here's he, – Yeah, he looks great, and then they decided we can just run the ball. Yeah, here's what I will throw out. Josh Allen completed seven passes. Stephon Diggs caught four of them. Well, do you know Gabe Davis isn't going to catch any of them. But the point being, like – Diggs is still the guy. He, the 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 market share is outrageous. It, Would you it, it, ever it was sit st him down, Stephon no. Diggs? Not against the I mean, Chargers. Okay, I'm just saying, like there there might be people like Noah Brown. Yeah, I if would, Nico Collins doesn't play and it's Stroud, do you sit him down for Noah Brown? No, I would go. I, I would go, go Stephon Diggs. Diggs. Uh, Devontae Adams or Diggs. Um, I don't know Adams' matchup for next week, but that would be a matchup play. Adams it's Kansas play. City. Oh, then I would go Diggs. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Diggs has a great matchup next week, and and really, if if we're being honest, Diggs looked great to start that game. When they were throwing the ball, it was to Diggs, and he made great receptions. There was nothing on film that said like there's a problem here. What happened is what we already discussed. They were like, we're gonna run the ball a hundred and ten percent of the time and keep Dallas off the field. They can't stop the run, and so they didn't need to throw, and so it it sucks. But that but has been a multi-week thing with Cook, right? He's been a top – he's been the best running back for four weeks at the expense of Dig, Diggs for four weeks. Right. So I guess if they if they like the recipe, I think some maybe of the that, ceiling goes away? Possibly. I mean, if they're able to run the ball effectively yeah. and just annihilate their opponent that way, then, yeah, obviously Diggs is going to take a hit. Yeah. If you look at, like, the Chargers matchup coming up, because the, the, the Cowboys – they're great against wide receivers. You know, they've, they've got a good secondary, good pass rush, but they're not great against the run, whereas the Chargers, their secondary is terrible. They're, they're not great against the – They're not great against word anything. Here. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, it could get out of hand pretty quick, though. That's a good point. Yeah. Brandon Ayuk, for the first time in a long time, five yeah. targets, three Bummer. for 37. Yeah, honestly – Purdy missed him on Purdy just missed shot. him on a couple of deep yep. touchdowns. He did. Uh, um. Puka Nakua five for fifty. I this is another reason I lost in the D, in our DFS. I pivoted from McCaffrey and Cup in a lineup. Whoops! And, and switched over Whoops to Bijan Robinson and Puka Nakua. 
So, what did, what did Bijan score officially in DraftKings? Negative a hundred. <laughs> like was he negative on there too? I don't uh, think he was negative. I don't in, think so. I think okay. he had like half a point or something. Uh, DJ Moore down yeah. game against Cleveland. Hopkins nine targets. Inexplicable drops. It was weird. Bombs man. that he caught, and then it, you should have seen the play, Mike. Did you <laughs> see the forty-two yarder where he he got up, and he's in the middle of the field, and the first thing he does is, and if you're watching on YouTube, he does the reception, yeah, yeah. like to the ref, like I caught ref. it, I caught it. So most players, when they catch the ball, they don't get up and say, "I caught it." No, and then he starts going like this, real quiet. He goes, he yeah. starts, he does the <laughs> finger thing where it's like, "Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up!" It was like a thief that was caught red-handed Diggs did it too yesterday yeah. where Diggs had a ball and then he goes uh, uh, yeah. hurry up I know I didn't catch that we're gonna need to get this snap off quick I still think teams don't know how to get up and snap the ball fast enough I'm 100 percent there agreed. needs, there you needs have to be a code to... word pineapple yes. pineapple yes there and then they just go snap it I don't care Sm spike uh spike it spike the it's, ball yeah. it it is 100 if you get a huge chunk play and you're not 100 percent certain Go make force them to throw the challenge flag. Who cares? But you also need to have a secondary code word, right? If pineapple's the code word to go, they need to start implementing orange. Okay. And orange means run up to the line like you're going to snap the ball to make that coach throw that flag. <laughs> you oh, know like a fake one? Yeah, like I know I caught this orange, orange. Thing. Orange should probably be the trying to get away with it thing for OJ. Uh, oh, oh my goodness! Wow. What a good murder joke! <laughs> it's an OJ Simpson joke. Yeah, it's an OJ it's football. Boston, get away with it! I y'all liked it. I, uh, I, I just, I mean, I didn't hate it. Mike's I'm more surprised. flabbergasted, but you know what? It's more of a what year is it? <laughs> and we're making OJ jokes. If I asked you to think about someone mm -hmm. that got away with murder, who do you think about? Yeah, OJ yeah, said, yeah, OJ, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's all my brain was doing. I was okay. like trying to figure a code right, word yeah. out. Update just because I was curious. Bijan in full PPR DraftKings scoring was one point four fantasy points. Yeah, not enough for me to not send you guys money. Unbelievable. All right, um, Garrett Wilson three for twenty nine. That was an extended. Yeah, and it you 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 got Washington next week, so it should be good. But who's mm -hmm. your who's your quarterback? Doesn't matter. Just play him? Yeah. Watkins? Or, I'm sorry, Wilson or Hopkins? I <laughs> combine them into Watkins. <laughs> Watkins. Um, DeAndre Hopkins or Garrett Wilson? Hopkins. I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson. Hopkins may have Ryan Tannehill. I mean, Hopkins had 14, 14, and nine targets the last three weeks, but this was tough. You're going Wilson against Washington. Correct. Hopkins takes on Seattle. They both Are have you, do you agree with him, Mike? I I think I lean Wilson, yeah. Drake London, two for 24. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Adam Thielen, four for 43. Oh, no. Next week, I have to decide whether to play Adam Thielen. <laughs> I'm so tired. Or Demario Douglas. Who hey, would you, you play? won the game, though, man. I know, but I partied. <laughs> That's why I'm tired. Were you out to like 9 p.m.? 7.30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you eat out of Luby's? Oh, it's delicious. Um, <laughs> Mike, Mike, this voice is getting retired <laughs> with the boom boom kicker at the end of the year. Um, says you <laughs> Calvin Ridley 12 targets 5 for 39 keeping Jason alive <laughs> oh, 12 man. targets oh, Jason, Jason's uh. matchup he's dead if Calvin Ridley catches any of the other 7 targets and you had the touchdown that Terry uh, who's who's the um, the referee that they have on the broadcast oh Terry, Terry McCullough or so, uh, yeah Terry McCullough did you watch that Mike yep yeah. I mean Terry McCullough was positive he was an idiot that this was <laughs> That this I mean, is a touchdown. I mean, he was so dumb, and he was so emphatic. He's like, "It's clear it's, and obvious." I'm like, "It is. It is the definition of wrong. not clear and obvious." I, I look. I I enjoy the 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 refs. You know, they they have a way different perspective than we have. But for the sake of those guys, just have the call happen, and then they get on afterwards and be like, "This is probably what the refs saw." And you can ask, "Do you agree with it or do you not agree with it?" That's fine. But to have them on there making the call before the refs do it is um, there's nothing to gain. If I, you're correct, good. You're supposed to get it right. You were a head official at one point. If you're wrong, you look real dumb. Well, and then they're never going to say, "Oh, I was dumb." Yeah, they're going to be like, "They got it wrong." <laughs> well, and then he's like, "I talked to the league, and I just disagree." And then like five minutes later, he goes, "I talked to the league again." 
It, and I just disagree. Who is the league? Who is he talking to? I think he's talking to the replay office that made the call. I think Terry has money on, on <laughs> Calvin Ridley touchdown. It was like you were by the time he finished bobbling that ball, uh, his cheek and his back foot was out of bounds. At least it was close enough where you it was could close not enough. tell for sure. It was called on the field, not a catch. You and I agreed completely that it was the call on the field that was going to stand. I used the words in Slack that it wasn't clear and obvious. And moments later, he goes, clear and obvious yeah. touchdown. <laughs> and I was like, come on. Well, do I, we have to talk about these two? Oh, no, my um, gosh, man. You know, this is why I said you don't look at Lamar Jackson the way you look at the one-week Gabe Davis window. It wasn't a big game for Jackson. It wasn't a game at all for Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham. Yeah, It was a catastrophe for both those players. Lamar's at least sitting at QB9 on the week. I mean, QB scoring was not great. He's QB9 with 18.5 points right now. It's the Flowers and Beckham against that Jacksonville secondary. The, the fact that we had... No targets for Flowers in the first half. Two, he's, I, I guess one of them counted as a second target, but he caught one for seven yards. Beckham had one for 14. It was – A little bit of weather. Yeah, which I get, but it's – Zay Flowers, you've been using him close to the line of scrimmage for tons and tons of games. Flowers don't hold up under the weather. Yeah. Ooh. And it's winter. Yeah. It but, was. I mean, Beckham, Beckham had one catch. I mean, he got missed on another potential touchdown. Oh, no, that was Bateman, actually. Um it was San Francisco in San Francisco next week. I don't, I don't no, got confidence. You. Nope. Travis Kelsey, five for twenty-eight. George Kittle, two for fifty-four. Dalton Kincaid, goose. Dawson Knox, goose. Evan Ingram, four for twenty-eight. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill was One coming target? off of an injury, but you you kind of hoped for more. You thought his floor would be higher with Olave out, maybe catch uh, a few passes, but he did nothing. Breaking news. Yes. Yes. I feel like I, I told you guys this was coming. Yes. This Pittsburgh, was coming. Get ready for what you want. Mason Rudolph taking over. Oh, yeah. no. Yes. Saturday oh. game against the Bengals. Yeah. Grab the Bengals D. Yes. Mason Rudolph. Oh, man. For Christmas. Come I'm on. Not. Oh, Rudolph on Christmas? Yeah. Pretty great. This makes too much That's sense. That's tremendous. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank I'm not you. saying that Mitch Trubisky is the answer or even good. All I want for Christmas but, is the Bengals' defense. Is that the? But the Steelers fans clamoring for Mason Rudolph. Well, you got it. We'll see. Congrats. This so, is that full-on jet situation. Yeah. It's like it doesn't matter who the starter is. Your offense sucks. I know what's in your stocking. It's I mean, cold. <laughs> Deontay Johnson and George Pickens now don't block. I mean, you see Pickens just – Oh, my gosh, Pickens yes. cost him a touchdown. He's like, yeah, I'm out on this play. I mean, it is pathetic. Not what you expect from a Tomlin team. No, no. And maybe defending them so much. I mean, he – I don't know. Mike he's, Tomlin's he's great. He's trying. He's great, but, like, he defended Brown for so long, and he defended Pickens, and he defended Claypool, and he defended Deontay. And well, when you're defending Antonio Brown at the time, you're defending the best wide receiver in the league for multiple years yeah i d- i would defend him too yeah yeah um all right anything else brooksy any other news no sir back with waiver show tomorrow good luck in your games tonight hopefully you made it through the onslaught of disappointments and the rest of the rest of your team held you up so good luck tonight catch you tomorrow goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.